So hello, I'm Rahan Rashid from Bangladesh. This fork is in collaboration with two of my colleagues, Rupat and Ishtiak from the University of Toronto. I'll start with a little background and motivation of our work. The COVID-19 pandemic has had an enormous impact on the electronic device usage patterns of end users. Practices such as work from home and online education have resulted in an extended usage of electronic devices. And that often results in a frequent malfunction and breakdown of devices. On the other hand, it has also impacted the informal market of technology and repairers and electronic waste workers, commonly known as Pangaris in Bangladesh. Lockdown and social distancing regulations have forced these actors of an informal market to shut down their shops and businesses all on a sudden. While this increased usage of technology during a pandemic is interesting, but what happens to the after use phase of technology during a pandemic is equally fascinating. Work within HCI and sustainable computing established the importance of studying the repairer US handling communities. Steve Jackson further pushes for the idea of a broken world and advocates that repair is a technological work. A growing thread of such work unpacks the types and moments of technological work. Eli Blavis, on the other hand, introduced sustainable interaction design, SID, that inspired new design strategies and resulted in other work that highlighted the material and aesthetic aspects of technology and how they impact the previous phase. So to understand how this uh, broken world functions during a crisis like COVID-19, we'll look at the persistence and sustainability of repair, recycle, and e-waste handling communities. In doing that, we draw on work about community resilience, through their recent work about repair in remote Philippines, Esther Jang reveals that the work of after use space of technologies themselves embed an infrastructure. And that is basically a summation of diverse human and material practice. But building exactly on that notion of infrastructuring, we, our work is guided by the following question. What happens when an infrastructure that is regarded stable suddenly breaks down? What consequences it has on the practices within the repair and Bangari communities? How does this impact the interaction with individuals beyond their own community? What existing factors such as social connections, relevant experience, access to facilities, and creative actions facilitate resilience? What new skills are accurate for that? And finally, what are the social and political challenges repairer, Bangaris, and end users face in an attempt to cope with breakdown? To understand the impact of infrastructural breakdown, we conducted an interview with study in Dhaka, Bangladesh. We have studied two different groups of people in the study. One is the end users of electronic devices and the other being repairer and Bangari communities. COVID-19 first hit Bangladesh in, on March 8, 2020, and the country quickly went into lockdown within two weeks. We started data collection on April and continued for four months. We started with our existing lead at two of the country's biggest repair hubs, and the largest e-waste handling market in Bangladesh called uh, Nimtoli, which is situated in Purantaka. We used noble sampling to interview more participants, and by July 2020, we interviewed 15 device repairers and another 15 Bagaris. We also conducted interviews with 21 end users of mobile phones and computers who experienced problems and issues and breakdowns of their devices. So this set of interviews basically complemented our findings from repairer and e-waste communities, and these data also give us insights into their practices in a broken infrastructural situation when they needed to get their devices fixed. While most of the participants came from responding to our social media posts and agreeing for an interview, we connected with some other participants via repair shop owners or leads. About the demographics of our participants, all our Bangari and repairer workers were male. However, among 21 end users, eight were female. So now we will quickly look at some of the key themes and findings from our analysis. The initial lockdown mandated by the government forced many repairers and Bangaris to leave their profession. Participants reported leaving their shop and going back to their hometown during the space. When partial reopening was allowed in July 2020, many of them could not even return. For some, the reason was the due rent they had to pay upon coming back. And for others, it was a drastic shrink in the number of customers. Large workshop owners saw their business collapse and found it hard to maintain their work without the help of migrant workers. On the other hand, those migrant workers were under uh, constant pressure. For instance, some Bangaris told us that the dumpsters are a big source of their US collection, and they constantly feared catching COVID while collecting from dumpsters. Also, their family members back in home pushed against coming back to work uh, in a big city like Dhaka. For instance, in this quote, uh, 
the father of a Bengali worker compared working in an electric west market with living in Habia, which basically means um, hell in Bengali. Some participants hard to describe this disruption as God's punishment, which will take some time to pass. And they need to wait till then before considering even a return. So other than the initial disruption, a uh, scarcity of resources caused by COVID-19 and additional safety concerns extensively shaped the ways repairers and Pangaris change their work pattern. Most of the frontliners of Pangari industries, uh, for example, who collect e-waste for part of dismantling, told us that they left this job and wanted to work deeper into the process. There was also a disruption in the supply of raw electronics and tools and necessary to the market. Uh, usually raw materials and electronics come in the market in two ways. One is uh, importing Chinese parts and the other is uh, extracting functional parts from a second-hand smartphones. So both China and Bangladesh during at the time were under extensive lockdown and the customer presence in the market was their minimum. So all these things together thwarted the natural workflow of preparing electronics. So to cope with this kind of shortage of parts, uh, repairers came up with uh, different strategies like uh, trying alternative techniques, substituting preferred parts of uh, uh, brand for parts, and uh, kind of trying to controlling repair costs. For example, one repairer shared with us that before the pandemic, they did not even prefer uh, only replacing the broken glass on a smartphone display because it was a risky process and equally time consuming. But as there was no supply of full display unit from China, they had to attempt carefully removing the glass and then cutting, then gluing, et cetera, which would take around one and a half hours uh, compared to the five minutes of only installing a brand new Chinese display. Also, a repairer in large markets mentioned reaching out to repair shops in smaller markets. As the neighborhood repair shops and localities had a better connection with people living around, a good chunk of discarded electronics during the pandemic were to, to them, as suggested by the repairs in large markets. So now let's look farther deeper on how such communication and collaboration within the communities shifted during COVID-19. So collaboration among members within Bangaris and repairers community happens through peer assistance and apprenticeship, as suggested by the earlier work. And that essentially keeps them connected and well situated within the market and well within the greater community. The pre-pandemic infrastructure supporting such cooperation was thus heavily dependent on in-person training and active participation. However, repairers reported that such extensive collaboration has been suddenly shifted to become online, primarily based on uh, chat apps like WhatsApp and Messengers. Those platforms were also used to communicate with those peers who left the profession due to pandemic, as well as to discuss possible terms and conditions to be negotiated with the market authorities when the markets are going to be reopened. So maintaining such an online nature of communication uh, enabled the majority of the repairers to participate in the discussion. On the other hand, without much access to technologies like smartphone and internet, Bengali struggled to co co uh, collaborate and keep connected with each other uh, and have to depend on their ex existing relationships. For example, we found two cases where independent Bengalis who used to collect electronic waste on their own, left their small businesses and started working under their earlier customers. I mean, under other big repair workshop owners. So to cope with the decreased number of customers, participants adopted different strategies, uh, like utilizing their social skills, finding innovative ways to regain their interaction with customers. Uh, so one dominant thing that we observed was the establishment of remote connection to customers in many ways. For instance, one strategy mentioned by two repairers was to call old customers and then ask about their well-beings and later even ask about their devices. If the customers mentioned any issues in their devices, the repairers would suggest to come at their convenient time and get those devices repaired with quality parts and at a discounted price. Conversely, some other repairers shared that this was the customers who called them asking for help and suggestions about fixing over phone. Some other shop owners initiated pickup and delivery services for de devices and accessories during COVID-19, using dedicated employees for that, and sometimes taking help from courier services. So Repair further opened dedicated helpline providing remote help and urged on maintaining good ties with their customers. After such repairers shared a case about her mother who had a speaker problem in her phone and her son could not participate in the online classes. So the repairer told the mother not to come and instead sent her a new earphone as a workaround. 
So despite their attempts to connect with clients, four out of five repairers providing remote uh, services told us that they did not receive any amount for their online consultancy. And they found it really hard and awkward to ask customers about payment over phone. So now let's quickly look at some of the findings that we generated from the end user study. Our findings show that the sense of ownership of device often determines who can attempt repair within a family. Seven participants had an opinion that repairing is a job for male and women in their family had, had to hand over their phones uh, to their male family member. While most women conform to such norms, a participant reported that her sister did not hand her broken mobile phone to him due to privacy concerns. So similar dynamics existed for other members for their family uh, because of such family dynamics and privacy issues. Some of our participants reported hiding their devices problems and trying to repair their phone secretly on their own. And such secrets often come with other vulnerabilities. So one key challenge of uh, learning and practicing self-repair by the end users was the compromising among competing factors. On one side, there was an urgency of repairing since they were left with no other options. On the other, users knew that they were at risk of damaging their devices permanently if something goes wrong. So there was a constant negotiation and the decision to repair and not was primarily motivated by these factors. Also deciding to repair sometimes resulted in sacrificing certain features, enduring partial damage to the devices as evident by this code. So users will find that unintended consequences were inevitable because they had no basic knowledge about repairing. So other thing is the repair activities by the end users involved many innovative and creative interventions. Such creative skills were not necessarily similar to like expert repair skills that we find in repair markets. Rather, the skills were gleaned from uh, relevant day-to-day experiences and sometimes transferable to repairing electronic devices. For instance, some participants brought their knowledge from academic curriculum, which they won't necessarily apply anywhere else. So one user shared with us that he had an experience working with microcontrollers and wearing the solder irons. So he used that academic skill to repair his laptop charger, which he could not replace due to being locked out at home. Some other participants reported trying to repair even with their limited knowledge, and they wanted to see what happens next. Some of them described that they had nothing to lose even if they tried. Regardless of success or failures, users showed an increased interest in conducting small fixes. So some users saw their fixing intentions thwarted by the lack of information, lack of proper and detailed tutorials available over the internet for the specific devices. This way, they could not proceed well after their initial attitude. So now let's, uh, what does all of our finding mean to the Compass and HCA community? So now I'll talk about some of the key takeaways from our work that is important to sustainable, uh, sustainable computing. Our study brings to the fore a crucial question around the sustainability of socio-technical infrastructure under shocks and breakdowns. Instead of a utopian view of growth and development, we stress in conceptualizing a world that is constantly falling apart. The you breakdown of repair, yeah, thank you. The breakdown of repair markets in Bangladesh demonstrates that the very basic assumptions around technological infrastructure, for example, the idea of expert-mediated service, may not be available always. So it's important to look at the infrastructure uh, in the face of breakdown to understand its core strengths, delicacies, and resources. Also, as we can see in our data, the informal, improvised, and collaborative mode of resistance uh, to the breakdown of repair markets is not free from various social and cultural politics. For example, gender remains an important issue in building res uh, resilience. As we have seen in our data, women often did not have the right to fix uh, their devices, and they also struggled to get help from the uh, repairers, who they identified as stranger men. And connecting to work on Noon's conceptual understanding of ownership in Bangladesh, we further contribute to the notion of post-user phase of ownership, where the right and responsibility to take care of repair works is often uh, defined by the family hierarchy and defined by the gender. We show that fixing intent of female users uh, does not always translate into the capacity to attempt repair. Besides, we also have shown how the access to tools, informal connections were more available to certain people with a certain education and advantages background. So finally, our findings contribute to the scholarship of sustainable computing in two ways. First, our, find, our study demonstrates that a sustainable uh, repair ecosystem requires care, uh, support, collaboration, and knowledge infrastructure. 
Second, our study shows how infrastructures that are important for environmental sustainability, such as a repair and electronic waste processing, are poorly built in the global south, and how these communities need extra effort and to combat an unforeseen challenge. So new trends such as remote and collaborative repair could be a new way to look at the broken computing research. So according to Sambas Ivan Smith, exploring such human infrastructure as a network renders new opportunities. We believe our study is the first state to exploring and characterizing the sustainable computing infrastructure during a pandemic. Anissa. Thank you everyone for joining my first ever paper presentation. Please do leave me feedback and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.